All right, and once we uh, get the field audit completed and uh, we, we sync that into the server, when you get to your computer to log into Snap Count, this is what the login screen will look like. You just simply put in your username and password and uh, log in. Once you're logged in, this is the uh, home screen. It will show you your completed audits, your, your audits that you have on schedule, as, as well as a uh, graph, you know, the, the uh, material, labor, or the recycling of, of each job that you've uh, recently proposed. So the, f the first thing to do is to go to the audits tab, which is, is the, uh, the, the tab right there, and we'll click on that. And then we'll find the audit uh, that you had just completed uh, out in the field. And in this case, our audit uh, was called Zenergy. We'll click on that. And then you'll see the uh, how all your information from the field has, has uh, now been synced and, and showing on the server. Uh, the fixture summary is going to graph out the main types of fixtures you have in your audit. And uh, the, the first step to do is to go to the, the tab here for audit detail. We have three tabs when we're, we're cleaning the up an audit. The first one is the audit summary, then we have the audit detail, and then last we have the output tab. Uh, but the first step is to go into the audit detail. And in here you'll see the, the location and area of what you named each room. Um, we, like here we have the office one, office two, office three, and so on and so forth that we had uh, from our, our mobile device. And then we'll have our, our category for all the fixture types, as well as uh, the attributes of each fixture, the burn group, the action, the quantity, any notes, photos, uh, you know, audio and, and special equipment. And uh, this, this hourglass icon is your uh, difficulty factors. Uh, for keying those in from uh, the mobile device. So as you can see here, we have some, some issues. Um, under the action, we have some, some empty uh, choices here. And these all need to be filled in in order to, for the audit to progress to the, uh, the proposal. Pause that for a minute. So the first thing to scrub down the audit, uh, we see this box right here that says validation where you can see we'll have a, a yellow circle and, and sometimes a red. Um, and those are pointing to errors that, that just must be corrected in order to generate a proposal. Uh, the program defaults that these things uh, uh, must be fixed um, before you can go any further. So we'll just click on that icon. Then you'll see in here on the validation, see the series of the, the green checks and then we have a, a red where, where something indicating that that must be fixed for us to continue. And it, it, you'll notice it says here rooms without burn hours. And, and all that is is when we're going through the, the field audit, we didn't enter in burn hours for, for some areas. So it'll, it, the program will list each room that has any issues. So all we simply do is, is just go there to the right um, and you'll see the, the box that says find and fix. So we'll click on that and now it's gonna separate all these these rooms here that we did not add the burn hours so you can see here under the mass select they'll all be checked off so all we'll do is just simply go up here to the mass updates and we'll find the action that we need to correct in this case you can see right there it's burn hour group so we'll click on that and we're gonna have our burn hour groups already listed that we've been using so we're gonna these are all offices, so we're going to change the burn hour group to office, and you see it will uh, plug those in for each room that it's telling us to fix. And we'll, right above, we have a button that says apply changes. You just simply click on that, hit OK, and then it's going to update those burn hour groups. As you can see here, they're all now listed under the office. The next thing we're going to do Let's just check our validator again to see if there's any other issues. And it's saying in here we have some existing definition issues. Now on existing definitions, those are done in a, a different area of the program, which we'll show you uh, at a later point in time. 
And then the next, we can see here we have some actions that aren't filled in. So you can check off each one of those boxes. And then we'll go back up to mass updates again. And we're going to check off action. And in this case, we're going to retrofit all of these. And you can choose if these were to be to replace the fixtures with something entirely new um, or do nothing, exclude. You have a, a lot of options in here. So we're going to select retrofit and apply changes. Hit OK. Now you can see all those are filled in that we're going to be retrofitting. So it's important for not only the rebate application, but as well as when your installers go out. So you're giving them some direction on, on what needs to be done at each one of those fixtures. All right, so now we have all the office areas uh, and the area we initially identified as, as the interior uh, completed. We're gonna look here at the uh, area we identified as the exterior. And if you recall from uh, when we're out in the uh, field, we used a, an aerial photo that we'll pull up here. Uh, for, for our floor plan on the outside and you can see the the icons here where we added uh, the wall packs and uh, so so now every rebate company can be a little bit different in some cases uh, the customer will qualify for a higher rebate if we replace the entire fixture and in some utility companies uh, the rebate will be higher if we retrofit uh, at this point in time we want to make sure we, we know our rebates and, and what's going to be the most benefit for the customer. And in a future video, we'll, we'll go in a lot more depth here on the rebates. Um, but, but let's say, for instance, here, that the customer was going to benefit more if we replace the entire fixture. So what we're going to do is on these metal halides on the wall packs, you can see right now we have an action to retrofit these. So if we wanted to change these to replace, once again, this is important because when the installers go out, if we have these identified to retrofit, that's what they're going to do. Um, if we have them to replace, you know, uh, we're, we're going to replace the entire fixture. So it's important we put the right action on there. So we're going to check those off. We're going to scroll back up to our mass updates and we're going to go to action. And in action, you can see that we already have those fixtures identified to retrofit, but we're gonna change them all to replace. We're gonna apply the changes, hit okay. Now you can see those wall packs are now identified to, to be replaced. And then scrolling down, we have our, our pull mounted metal halide. So if you look to the left of the screen, uh, you'll see the different uh, lights we identified in the floor plan and they have no action listed here at all. So we're gonna to wanna to make sure we put the appropriate action in there so we can continue to the, the next process of getting the proposal done. So we'll, we'll check those off, go back to mass updates, action type, and in this case, let's just say the rebate was best to retrofit. We're gonna retrofit these, hit apply changes, and okay. Now you can see we've got all these marked to retrofit. If there are any other additional errors uh, when you're trying to clean up an audit on the server, that you will have red lines uh, in, e in each item. Um, you know, and as you can see here, uh, we have no red, nothing marked in red. Everything is clean um, and, and corrected. Now the one thing we need to do here as well is the next action basically is, is special equipment. And in these cases, we know in the office, everything was low where we can access easily. But outside here, these lights, some of them are 15 to, to 25 foot in height where we're going to need a lift. So then once again, we're going to mark these off where we're going to need a lift. We're going to go back to our mass updates. Now we're going to go to equipment. And we're going to go up here to the top to special equipment. We're going to change these to a, let's just say we needed a, a 40 foot one man lift. So we're going to mark those 
and apply changes. Hit OK. Now you'll see the little ladder icon here for all those lights on the outside identifying that special equipment is going to be needed to get that properly installed. All right, now you'll notice we have a couple red lines on the screen. Uh, as a safeguard, uh, we've built into the, the tablet when you're, when you're out in the field doing the mobile audit. And if you're looking at a bulb or a fixture and you're not sure what it is, uh, there, there's a button on there uh, with TBD on it for to be determined. Um, all we got to do is just simply identify that bulb or fixture as a TBD. And, and then when you go in there, uh, it's important that we make sure we get a multiple of, of, of photos. Uh, we can shoot video at that point in time. Um, anything that we need to do to so we can properly identify uh, the bulb or fixture uh, that, that you're having an issue with. When that is then synced into the computer, it'll be marked in here on the audit with these red lines and, and flag that uh, you need help identifying what these are. And this is important uh, that, that we do it this way so they, they can be properly identified uh, for the rebate purposes as well as you know when we, we send out the proper amount of LEDs for you that we're sending you the, the correct bulbs. All right, so now that once we've, uh, we know we, we, we've got the two errors here on the to be determined. So we're just gonna click in uh, to go inside that room, which is Office One. And then when you get into Office One, you'll see the tabs going across for each type of uh, bulb or fixture that, that's in that room. So uh, we'll go to room number 21 here. That's where we have our first uh, fixture identified here as it, it's to be determined. So what we can do here is, is first with the photos that you, you've taken, and that's why anytime we have any, any to be determined, it, it's extremely important that we get you know enough photos so we can properly uh, identify these for you. So if we click on it, we can open it up here and we can see by looking at this that it's a it's a troffer it's it's suspended mounted uh, and uh, it's a what we would call a two by four troffer it's two ball two bulbs that are four foot long uh, the first thing we can do is look at the end caps here we'll zoom in you can see here they're they're plastic end caps uh, ninety nine percent of the time when we when we see plastic end caps that that's going to be uh, already LED. Um, and then uh, we can tell actually even the photos are so so nice you can even see a lot of times the pins in here so we know it's a two pen bulb so uh, we can get out of that one and go into the the other photos here that were taken on site and the same thing look at that and and help you guys identify what type of, of bulb or fixture we're looking at and see here you can even see that we have a pin here and a pin here so the, the photos are extremely important and, and really help aid in the, in the proper uh, identification of each bulb type. So, so now we know by looking at these photos that, that it's already LED and uh, that it's a, a two by four. So what we'll do is we'll click here on the fixture. And this is gonna pop up the same type of screen that, that you used to seeing on your tablet. So we're gonna hit add new. And once again, we have all of our bulb types and we have an option actually in here for linear LED. So we'll select that. Let's say we knew these were 15 watt T8 LED tubes. There's two of them per fixture. They're in a troffer. And it's a two by four. And it's open type of troffer with no lens. And it is suspended mounted. We already had in here from the mobile audit that there was three of them. So, so now we've properly identified that, and it's very important that we hit save and close. So it saves that information. And one thing you can see here in this is that even though we've properly identified that, that this line is, is still red. And the reason is it's already LED. So we wanna make sure we put our, our check in the box here beside it. Go to mass updates, and we're gonna go to action. And what we're going to do here is we're going to exclude this in the audit 
uh, for our action type because once again, it's already LED. We don't want to make sure that's counted in uh, into the rebates or any of that information going to the installer telling them to retrofit that type of fixture. Now, even though we're excluding it from the audit, this, this fixture will still show up in all the paperwork and reports that go out uh, for the field as well as to the customer. So we'll just apply these changes. And then, uh, you know, it all. Okay, so then we, uh, we properly identified the first to be determined here. You can see it's a linear LED, and the, uh, the trough for everything we just put in. So now what we're gonna do next is uh, we're gonna go into the one uh, below it here that's, that's still marked as TBD, which you can see is number 22. So we'll go back into Office One. Right here is our, our tab that's marked number 22. We're gonna go into there. We're going to uh, pull up the photo. And we can zoom into this once again. We can tell that this is uh, certainly a, it's a medium based photo uh, bulb. And we can see right here on the bulb it says HPS, which stands for high pressure sodium. It's 150 watts and it's a medium base. Um, once again, with uh, the different bulb types, uh, we'll be, we'll be uh, referring to some more videos here coming up um, on how to identify the different bulb types and, and uh, all that's out there that uh, is existing. So we'll close that. We'll go into our fixture, click on the TBD. We're going to hit Add New. And we're going to find our high pressure sodium. And right here we have our HPS 150 for high pressure sodium, 150 watts. In this case, it was one light per fixture. It was in a, a dust to dawn fixture, which dust to dawn means it has a photo cell located on the top uh, that will turn on as it gets dark and turn back off as, as uh, the sun comes up the next day. And this was a medium base. The bulb type on this one was clear. It was pole mounted. We had already identified from the field audit that there was one fixture. So what we'll do is hit save and close. And what we'll do here is we can see both of these uh, do not have the burn hours. So we're going to check these off. We're going to go to mass updates to a burn hour group. We're just going to say that these were both in the office burn group of the 2,080 hours per year. We'll hit apply changes and we'll save those. Okay, and then when we get back in here, we can see our high pressure sodium. We need to put an action in here. So we're, we're just going to select that one. So you can go to mass updates to action. In this particular case, we're going to retrofit it. So we're going to change it to retrofit. Click Apply Changes and OK. And now, now that's in there and corrected. Now you'll notice that the the one that we identified as already being LED is still red, and and the reason for that is because our action type in here was to exclude that uh, uh, particular one from our our audit and, and quote. So, so it'll stay red just to make sure it brings it to our attention that that, that is it, uh, excluded and, and not to be you know identified for any uh, rebates or energy savings. All right, and now once we've uh, scrubbed down this audit from the work we've done in the field, we've corrected our to-be-determined fixtures. We, we've made sure all of our burn group hours are properly identified, our actions, whether we're going to retrofit, exclude, you know, remove if it, there's options in there for a fresh install. And, and once this thing is, is fully complete and, and our errors are all corrected, we will go back to the first tab that says audit summary. Select that. And then all the way over here on the right side is a button that says status update. We will click on that. And then in this, I'll expand it. So, so to recap, 
when you add the customer for the first time, the audit is planned, and then it from once it's planned, it it's scheduled. So then when it's scheduled means is you'll get an email saying that an audit's been scheduled for you with the, the customer's name and address, and you'll go out and you'll, you'll perform it, and then you'll mark it complete in your tablet and sync it. So, so then it, it goes to this completed stage. And then once you logged into the computer and, and scrub the audit down, the, the last step here is to mark that it's finalized. So if you click that it's finalized, hit confirm, it now changes that audit to, to finalized. And then the computer will then show an, a button right here that'll say create quote. It, it will not let you create a quote if there's any errors or any conflicting data in there. So, so that goes back when we're in the field. Let's make sure we get photos of all of our fixtures and, and everything properly identified. Otherwise, it won't even let us create a quote or a proposal if we don't have the, the proper information.